Well, welcome back again to uh, to the workshop for part two of building the hand force pump. Uh, during the week, I got an, a letter from Jeff Elliott, and he's got a channel called Practical Renaissance. And Jeff sent me some uh, a couple of stickers, uh, so we'll put one up on the put his sticker up on the board. And um, I'm starting to run out of room on this board, but uh, there's always plenty of room uh, around the shop for stickers. Put him up there. So check Jeff's channel out. Quite a good channel. And uh, thanks for the stickers, Jeff. So uh, while I'm here, this is the this is the ML7. Uh, not the ML7. This is the Super Seven. A quick look at him. Um, beautiful old machine, built in the 60s. Probably about, uh, I think it's about 1968, and uh, I'm not the original owner. Uh, I bought it off a man, uh, off a man's son, and his name was Ken Lance, and uh, he, he's no longer with us. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm looking after his lathe for him, and a lot of his tools, and micrometers, and, and uh, all kinds of treasures, uh, and uh, very, very happy to have them and uh, I really love this old lathe, it's a beauty. I've got a, over the other side of the workshop, I've got an, a, an ML7, uh, which I've had since I was about uh, 16. Uh, got it new, um, and that's also, that's my, that's my other favorite lathe, and uh, it's great having two. Uh, and you know, often I'll take something off of this, this one and put it on the ML7 and swap them around and the chucks are all interchangeable and all of the uh, all of the attachments and the tool holders and everything are all interchangeable, in, interchangeable so uh, that's great. Uh, fantastic old machines. Getting rare now too so if you can get one you're doing well. Lots of people restore them and they also have a great um, Facebook uh, page called the MyFood page. Um, thanks for everyone who watched my last uh, video and uh, I'm reliably informed that the little lizard wasn't a gecko it was a water dragon so that's even more exciting uh, <laughs> I should have known because it has a long tail and a gecko has a little stubby tail uh, well, I didn't think of that I've just uh, I've always seen uh, geckos in here so um, fantastic he's I don't know I haven't seen him again since he's scurried away under the bench and, and uh, disappeared so uh, hopefully we'll see him again one day anyway uh, back to the job at hand the uh, hand force pump okay so this is the next part we want to make um, this is where we got to last time uh, that's the body of the pump now I found out that this pump uh, was made by Stuart Turner's uh, but they haven't made this pump for a long time I don't think they've made this since probably the early 70s and um, I don't know how I managed to 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 be lucky enough to get a set of castings for it uh, but I, I can find nothing uh, no other photos of it or anything or and I've looked through oh, I've got a 1980s catalog and uh, it's not in it so I don't know so anyway this this is the next part and uh, what I've got to do is uh, turn up that mating surface to, to uh, not not to fit there to fit on this side and fit in there and there's a hole that goes through obviously a hole that connects up and a hole that connects up like that and there's a couple of threads so obviously uh, holding something like this you know how are you going to hold this it's all over the place I could put it in the forge or chuck um, and that would probably be the way most people would do it um, but you know it's forge or chuck's going to probably put marks on the on the sides and it's going to be you know especially when you're moving it around it's going to scratch it's going to be pretty horrible and uh, you know and then so then you've got to figure out a way of of, of, of getting these holes so what I came up with and I've been cheating a bit I did this did this um, uh, uh, off, off camera so I've made I this is the block uh, 
this is the block that we used to turn to turn uh, to turn this on what did I do before oh yeah I did it like that that's right so I held it I had last time I held it like that uh, so same same piece of aluminium um, and uh, what we can do this time is I've plonked a hole through it and I've plonked a groove through it and what happens now is that that fits hopefully uh, without too much drama that should fit yep that fits in there and then these straps close down on it like that and we can tidy it, tighten it down with these tiny little M3 um, low profile screws which I just happen to have in the cupboard and um, and now what's great about this is that we can put this in the four drawer chuck and clean that up we can put it in the mill and do that hole uh, we can put in the mill and do that hole we can put in the mill and do that hole and uh, everything's concentric we've got a common reference uh, it's going to be square life is really good so I think that's going to work out really well. I'm quite excited about this. It, you know, it took me it took me a bit of work making this um, fixture, but you know, um, so what? <laughs> I'm not charging by the. I'm not. I'm not charging you by the hour, uh, or anyone else by the hour. And uh, if it takes longer, that means I get a bit more fun out of the project. And. Um, what I don't want to do is muck it up. Good. Oh, good. Okay, so I've put a half inch um, piece of rod in there, it's actually the piston, uh, and uh, just lining that up. We're right on the on the ballpark there, within about five thou anyway.
Okay, so there you go. We've got a really nice hole there. If I can focus on it. Now I just need to put a tap up, tap thread in the top of it. Okay, so we've got the tap in the drill chuck there, and it's an intermediate um, taper tap. So we just want to get it started. Push that in there, make sure it's nice and square. Oh. Take, take the uh, depth gauge, depth stop off first. Get that going, a couple of good threads. It's very soft, this bronze. Okay. Okay, I've made another little fixture here, just a block of aluminium with a slot in it and a hole to hold that flange. And I've sent it up in the fore jaw as best I can on this casting. And uh, you can see it's pretty good. Um, so now we can clean up this face and pop in that. Uh, there's a thread to be cut on here, so that'll be fun. Spot on, first time.
Okay, there we go. Part two finished. Looks pretty good to me. Holes lined up. And everything seems to fit. And all the stuff is connected. Got a nice seat there for our uh, for our ball bearings. So I think that's that's a tick. Put our piston in. Pretty good. 